Good morning, everyone. Yeah. So today I'm going to talk about mechanical inhibitor summary and how to study mechanical transduction pathway. So you guys saw many mechanical transduction pathway in many paper, but not many person exactly know how they are linked together and what is the real meaning. So it's not easy to understand at the first time when you study and read the paper and then see the mechanism. But when you repeatedly try to understand it, finally you can catch it. So first paper in Nature Biology, Lamin AC and MRI regulate MKL1 SRF activity by modulating actin dynamics. So this paper, they, when they talk about this MKL1, this is a well-known MITFAA, and then they first find the role of the MITFA SRF activity, and then how they are linked in terms of lamin AC and MRI regulation. So this is their final outcome. When you see wild type cell, so first please follow the number. Number one, the low rock are activated by mechanical stimulation or serum, aka FBS. And then this FBS or mechanical stimulation activate low rock. And then this G, G monomer, global monomer, they can be polymerized to make effectin, okay? And then while they are polymerizing, MRTFA, MKL1, can be released from the global actin. And then because they are released, and then this MKL1 protein, they have NLS, nuclear ligand sequence peptide. So all the protein, when they have uh, NLS, Nuclear, nucleus ligand peptide sequence, they can go to the nucleus. So which means if you see the peptide sequence in the protein, you cannot, you cannot reveal any NLS, nuclear ligand sequence, the protein cannot go nucleus. Okay? So when some certain protein, including transcription factor or co-transcription factor like YAP, MRTFA, or beta catenin why they go, can go to the nucleus? Because they have some moiety to go to the nucleus, which is called NLS, nuclear ligand sequence. So because of that sequence, MRTFA, when they are self-released, self automatically they can go in the nucleus and then adopt to SRF as a cofactor. And then because this SRF serial repress factor can bind to this CARG box of DNA, and because of that, SRF target genes are activated, including actin, vinculin, and SRF. While they are doing, this amarin is deposited in the nuclear membrane, and then because of the deposition of amarin, Nuclear actin is well developed here. When they are well developed, this uh, yeah, amarin facilitates the polymerization of the nuclear actin, and then this reduce nuclear export to MRT, MRTFA, which require binding to the nuclear monomer actin. So interestingly, this MRTFA when they want to go outside, they need global nuclear actin. But here, because of amarin, the nuclear actin inside of the nucleus are well developed, so less monomer of global actin, so they, this MRTFA cannot go outside easily. So because of that, these SRF target genes are activated continuously because of MKL1 and SRF synergistic effect vinculin and SRF, and more active monomer are produced. So this is normal lamin AC wild type cell. But on the right, right side, lamin AC deficient or mutated somehow. What happened? Because there is no lamin AC somehow, so nucleus actin is gone, right? Compared to left, 
nuclear actin is gone, and because of that, amarine, their original location in the nucleus, like that, but they are changing their location to ER. And then this nuclear global monomer, actin monomer, they are binding to MRTFA, and then now they are powerful going outside. And when they go outside, so this, they are very well communicate each other between global actin and the MRTFA. So there is not much of actin polymerization. So this MRK1 cannot go into nucleus. Even under serum stimulation and mechanical stimulation. So, when you see the difference between these two, the left wild type is because of actin polymerization, MRTFA can be free, and then because of NLS, nuclear ligand sequence can go inside, and then because of they have many nuclear actin, MRTFA they cannot bind to global actin in the nucleus and then they cannot go outside. So they can continuously locate the nucleus. Because of that, related target genes can activate. So making more vinculin and more actin again and more SRF. But here, there is no laminase and then amarine go to ER, no lamine nucleus, uh, no lamine actin. So there have many low, low lamine affecting means there are a lot of global monomer actin. Because of that, they are continuously go outside in the binding these two together, so they cannot make many affecting. Sometimes they can make affecting by the serum and mechanical simulation, but because they are when they go inside, somehow they are released to get, released each other go inside, and then again, because of their many nuclear actin, they can go outside, okay? So regardless of affecting, this MRTFA can go inside, outside fast. But here, when they go inside, they cannot go outside, okay? So when you think about some mechanical transduction, always there are two ways, go inside, go outside, postpolation, depostpolation, kinase, dekinase. They are all dynamics, okay? So based on that, you try to understand what is the real mechanism. So when you read this uh, figure legend, you can more easily understand. So they show like this. So when you see lamination deficient cell, mouse and burning fibroblast, minus, minus, this plus, plus wild type, as you can see, affecting well developed, both of them, right? Only difference is from the nucleus. Somehow, nucleus a uh, little bit different, right? This is well, well green color, but somehow the color is, and then morphology is different, nucleus. When you see tubulin, tubulin is yeah, another, yeah, another component of the cell to consist of the cell structure. Tubulin also well deposit left and right. In case of vimentin, this interfilament also somehow developed, right? Only difference can be observed from the laminase and then amarine and then MRTFA go inside, go outside. So when you see the paper, they are making this kind of MRTFA GFP and then somehow this MRTFA, GFP, using two GFP. So when you see plus plus, this is some control group. Start mean without FBS. And then when they add FBS, this MRTFA continuously go inside and then very prominently within three minutes, MRTFA can go inside, right? But in case of lamin minus minus, 
without ramen? They seem to go inside, but not prominently. Because this is some dynamics, so once FBS serum is added to the cell, what will happen? When serum is added, here, when serum is added, serum stimulates this raw rock, and then MRTFA can be free, and then some, some can go inside, and then some can go outside. But well developed nuclear affecting, they catch the MRTFA inside, so then they are more deposit. But in case of laminase deficient, when they can go inside, many MRTFA can go outside, so they are balanced, but in low intensity. So this is a lamin mutated cell. Also, they are they are somehow deposit, but not like our normal control. So using this uh, special protein, MRTFA and GFP conjugated one, they visualize how MRTFA are deposited in nucleus over time, like that. But in case of lamin deficient or lamin mutated one, they are diminished. And then this is nuclear fluorescence. And then this is, they checked using the laser, they burn out the cytoplasm MRTFA and then check how the MRTFA fast go outside of cytoplasm. In case of ramin normal one, very slowly compared to other. Other, they are going very fast because there is no ramin AC, no nuclear affectin, and then mRNA is not deposited in the nucleus membrane. So they have many nuclear global monomer and global monomer can bind MRTFA and then they are driving, driving the MRTFA go outside the nucleus, cytoplasm. So like that, you, this is called like flap or flip. Use the laser to burn out the certain protein. So when you burn out the nucleus, you can get this kind of F graph. When you burn out, they show like that. And then over time, how the this uh, JPP positive nucleus can go inside. You can track it. And then when you burn out the cytoplasm area, how the MRTFA JPP can go outside. You can also track. And then when you see this cyto D, cyto D is actin T polymerization. So when you see three cell, the actin is not well developed. But when you wash out, Wash out the cyto D effect, actin depolymerization is gone. And then after one hour, two hour, in normal lamin positive cell, they are making more affecting stress fiber after two hours later. But in case of lamin deficiency and lamin mutate one, after two hours or so, not many stress fiber. So when, so they give you, actually this kind of uh, flip flap study using laser, not easy at the moment, but we will, we will set up this machine again later. But this kind of inhibitor treatment and then wash out, and then how the cell behave differently, you can use this concept for your study. So this is today the whole summary. So I hope you guys should memorize this one. And then when you perform the final exam, you exactly picture these schematic images and inhibitor. So yeah, maybe you have already familiar with this inhibitor. So please see one by one. Just to see, blebistatin, myosin 2 inhibitor, Y, ROC inhibitor, ML7, MLCK inhibitor, NSC23, ROC1 inhibitor, C3, low inhibitor, like photos, LAD, Cyto D, actin polymerase inhibitor, Nocodazole, tubuli polymerase inhibitor, betrophin, YAB inhibitor, Gazim chloride, GSM-TXS4, PHO inhibitor, 
루티민 렛, CSA, BAP TAF, 칼슘 피해 적은 인히비를, LPA, 컨트라스트, 로우 액티베이터와 야 미네스, 칼리클린 A, MLSK 액티베이터, 사이퍼시아 갈진, 인터스트럴 칼슘 릴리스, 앤 요다 원 피해 적은 액티베이터. So those are most of the inhibitor or activator using used for mechanical transition study. So what is the myosin 2? ROC, MHK, ROC, RO, actin. So when you see this inhibitor, it's not easy to understand the whole picture. So for understanding, I will make this graph. Okay, just so I continuously repeat this understanding. So please follow me. So when there is some electrical signal or mechanical, mechanical, mechanical stress or some confinement, sex relaxation, stiffness, anything, you have it. In terms of mechanical, physiological things, they somehow can activate calcium. Or somehow they can directly activate this low-way GTP. So in case of low-way, you should remember low-way GTP GTP is triple phosphatized phosphate and GDP is double di. So low A and low, they are they are when they convert to the GTP, low A GTP, they can combine to cell membrane. Which means when they are having GDP, they cannot bind the cell membrane. Okay? So GDP GTP, because of this phosphate. Sometimes they can bind cell membrane, sometimes they are, they are not binding. And then the binding of the cell membrane means they are activated. When they are activated, ROC, ROC is ROC kinase. And then ROC kinase, kinase means they can make some other protein, phosphorylation. Most of the phosphorylation is on, signal on. When signal on, MLC, myosin light, myosin light chain, I will tell you later, myosin light chain, they are phosphorylated by log kinase. And then, non-morsin myosin 2, which they can regulate the actin as a motor. So this actin motor is activated, and then actin myosin contraction occur, and then some cell area motility or certain change. Okay? This is one pathway. In another one, this is some ROG1. ROG1 somehow inhibit this low A GDP. And then this low A GDP somehow they inhibit ROG1 GDP. I will, I will show you later. So they um, reversely inhibit each other. And then this is another like another kinase, rock kinase and MLC kinase. MLC is what? Myosin light chain. Myosin light chain, kinase, but here, very interestingly, this myosin, uh, myosin light chain kinase, when they are postulated, and then they can postulate myos myosin light chain. Okay? This rock, low kinase without any phosphorylation when they activate by low GTP they can activate the myosin light kinase but here myosin light kinase and uh, myosin light chain kinase when they are phosphorylated they can activate the myosin light chain by phosphorylation but this myosin light chain kinase there's another uh, inhibitor some protein. This is called myosin light, myosin light chain phosphatase. Here, this phosphatase means remove the phosphorylation. So this kinase they add phosphorylation. Myosin light chain phosphatase they remove phosphatase, phosphorylation of MLC. So inhibit the actin myosin contraction. So when when you turn off this myosin light chain phosphatase, they should be phosphorylated. And this phosphorylate can be activated by log kinase. So at the same time, 
is ROC kinase, they phosphate, they, they turn on MLC, and then they turn off this MLC phosphatase. And at the same, because of that, this MLC kinase, MLC chain turn on, and then myosin interaction occur, and then some cell area and motility change. So as you know, this is red one is affectin. This is myosin, okay? So affectin is like the, your bone or skeleton. So they cannot move by themselves. How they move? They can move with the help of myosin. And then this myosin is firstly found in muscle. And then they found another myosin, which is not in the muscle, which is called non-muscle myosin 2. So we have many papers dealing with non-muscle myosin 2. So we are exactly mentioning the same thing, non-muscle myosin 2, even though I just myosin. This myosin, they can bind to affectin, and then this myosin, they have some motor to contract or enlarge it, so they give the power to the affectin. So from the cell point of view, how you regulate this, regulate this myosin is very important. So this is one thing. This is um, a less affecting and more affecting as stress fiber, okay? So how they're making? Alpha, beta integrin in cell membrane and this integrin can make, sense the ECM, right? And then focal adhesion, somehow they're making. And then tallin is first focal adhesion complex protein. After that, vintulin are added and then affecting are uh, located here and the myosin like that. But compared to left, on the right, focal adhesion assembly more and then when they're assembled, affecting is well aligned. And because of that, this myosin, somehow they can be phosphatase, phosphorylation, which means turn on. Turn on means they induce contraction. Because of what? Because of this low kinase, rock, okay? Low kinase, this myosin is phosphorylation turning on and then they are making stress fiber as a rest that can induce contraction force. But in case of this rock one cdc 242 I will show you later, this is another low kinase family, low kinase small family, they depospholate myosin and then they are making this left manner, which means no stress fiber, no myosin, myosin to contraction. So like that, cell continuously phosphorylate the myosin to, or depospholate the myosin, and then align the stress fiber and disalign the stress fiber. So yeah, this is uh, how the myosin is regulated by this MLCK and MLCP. MLCK is myosin light chain kinase, MLC phosphatase, myosin light chain phosphatase. So just when you focus on this upper, myosin light chain, what is myosin light chain? Myosin light chain is actually, this is myosin heavy chain, light chain is here, and this is myosin head. So myosin light chain, they are like, they link myosin head and myosin heavy chain. They are more flex, and then because of my MLCK, with the help of calcium, and then phosphorylation, this MLC can be phosphorylated in this serin 18 and T19 site. And then they induce contraction force, and then they move the affected. And then through this manner, PKC and TYRK are involved, but PKA inhibit. As I told you, MLC phosphatase, they remove this phosphorylation. So they turn go back to normal status. And then there is no activation of myosin light chain, no contraction. But when you turn off this MLC phosphatase, because of rock, MLCP is phosphorylated. And then this is off status. When rock is gone, 
postpolation is removed, and then MLC postpartage remove this postpolation of MLC and then turn off this contraction. So you should understand MLCK activate the MLC postpolation and activate the contraction, but in another way, MLC postpartage turn off the postpolation and then remove the contraction. So I continuously explain this again and again. So someday you can understand. And then here, how they are linked them together. So when you see the blebistatin, blebistatin, they inhibit this ectomyosin interaction. Blebistatin, they combine with the combine with myosin head, myosin head, and then blebistatin, they located between this red and yellow one and because this blebistatin binding to this head of the myosin this head cannot recognize myosin binding site of the affected so even though they have some force to change something but they cannot bind the affected so they cannot transfer their power to the affected okay this is some mechanism of action of blebistatin. So they inhibit this actin myosin interaction, hmm. literally. And then in case of LAT A and Cyto D, this is affecting polymerization inhibitor. They remove, they make this red affecting as a monomer. So even though cell have power, and cell can attach, myosin can attach to affectin, but the affectin amount is even less. So they don't have any frame to transfer the power to the affectin, right? So this is another way how you decrease ectomyosin contraction. Even though myosin 2, they try to react, try to start, turn on, but there is no attachment frame because LAD, D, they inhibit the actin polymerization and then making this effect into monomer site. ML7, ML7, they inhibit this MLCK postpolation. Okay? MLCK, when they are postpolated, they can postpolate MLC. But ML7, they inhibit this MLCK postpolation. Why? Why 27 is here? Y27, they inhibit rock kinase and then they deactivate the MLC postpolation. In case of C3, C3 is low inhibitor, they, as upstream, they inhibit this low HTP. Okay. And then maybe if you use rutilium, red, CSA, and BAPTI AM, they uptake the calcium and then remove the interstellar calcium level. And then in case of ROC1, ROC1, they inhibit low GTP and low HTP also inhibit ROC1, but NSC, they inhibit ROC1. When they inhibit this ROC1, they can activate the row, right? Because when they have ROC1, they inhibit this row A and then less contraction. But when you inhibit this ROC1, no inhibition from the ROC1 to row A, and then row A can continuously activate it. So that is why people sometimes try to use NSC for leaving the mechanism. So when you, when, let's say, when you see some result of your cell, when you treat Y, the result change, come to normal, not activated, which means, oh, ROG is working. When you see 3 inhibit, again, go to normal, this is working. And then you can say somehow your material or your mechanical force through this low way GTP and rock pathway, they are involved. But in case of blebistatin, um, in case of C3 inhibit, when you use C3 as inhibitor and then your result is changed to normal, which means low way is involved. Why? When you treat it, but 
they cannot go to normal. They are maintain their activation, which means somehow not through this rock, okay, but somehow in other pathway, low wage GDP, they are not through rock. Through another pathway, they are activate this MLC postpolation or other way. So in terms of which inhibitor you are using, you can say from this stream or this stream, they can activate your ectomyosis contraction for affecting your cell. Okay, so let's start start to understand the low GT page. Actually, GT page is a large family of hydrogenase enzyme that bind to the uh, nucleotide guanosine trispartase GTP and hydrogen to the GDP. Actually, GT page is remove the phosphate group from GTP and then make the GTP to GDP. And then the, the subfamily of the GT page is low family of GT page. It's very important for us. They are size 21 kiloton and signaling G protein and in subfamily of last family. And then the mem members of the low GTP family have been shown to regulate many aspects of intracellular actin dynamics. So that's why from the GT page, we have to focus on low family of GT page, which is low RAC, rock CD42. Low rock CD42. And then when you more, when you understand this left figure, you should know this low GTP regulator. They have many regulators, and then three general class of regulators of low protein signaling. One is guanine nucleotide exchange factor, GF, JAPS, and JAPS, activated protein, and then nucleotide dissociation inhibitor, GDIS. GF, JAP, JAP, GDIS. So JAP means exchange. Maybe they can exchange GDP, GTP. GT page activating protein, maybe they remove the phosphate, right? And then make GTP to GDP. And then Vangoshin nucleotide dissociation inhibitor, somehow they inhibit dissociation. Now this is their, their law, how they make it. So let's see one by one. So as I told you, when low R GTP, they are binding together, this is their activation form, right? Turning on, and then they finally attach to cell membrane. And then they activate the effector, gene transcription factor, cytoskeletal remodeling, and vesicular tra trafficking. So this is very initial cell signaling. And then, but when their normal status, off stage is G, low GDP. Low GDP because of this exchange factor, GDP can change to GTP and then they are turning on. But when they want to turn off, they are using GAP, activating phosphatase. Phosphatase is remove the phosphate group from GTP and turn to GDP. And then this is their off form, but they are very easily gone, easily degraded. So they need GDI dissociation inhibitor. And then they continuously make this low GTP. And then sometime when they need low GTP, they just remove GDI and turn on using GF. When they don't have this GDI, it's low GTP, they are easily degraded. And then when they need fast this low GTP, they have to make low GDP again. It's very in inefficient. So that's why they have to save this raw GTP using GDI. Also, same manner, active form, inactive form, this is GF, exchange GDP to GTP, they have active, the cell behave. And then GF, activating phosphatase, they remove phosphate group of GTP to GDP, triple to double, and then make them inactivate. And then because the GDI, GDI is dissociation inhibitor, they are binding and then inactivate and save it. But somehow, when they are needed to activate, the GDI is gone through low lab GT page. Again, 
So this when when the cell are obtaining cell signal or receptor or from the physical factor, GTP GT page and activate form, they are binding to cell membrane, right? This activation can be mediated by last row RAP run ARF, some protein signaling. And then when they activate it, PI3K, KT, RAS lab, MAP, ARC, exporting, importing nuclear transport, membrane trafficking, exosome formation and fusion, cell migration, invasion, or cell spreading. Many things are starting, start, can start from this GT page activation, right? So this is very upstream. If it is upstream, when they turn off, they using GAP, activating phosphorylation, phosphatase, remove this phosphate group to GDP, and then inactive form. When they want to activate GF, exchange factor between double diphosphate group to triple phosphate group, and then they are making activate form. When they want to save GTPH, GDP long time, they attach GDI. Okay? So, so that's why this low GTPH regulator, GAP, GP, and then GTP, GTPH, GDP, GTPH is very important for regulating cell behavior or cell signaling. So many, many people studying about the mechanobiology Previously, they found this pathway only from the growth factor or hormone or cytokine. But they finally find out this GT page can regulate by mechanical force or some structure of the matrix. Okay, so, so what role of the GT page? So as I told you, GT page have three family, series 42, rock, Low. Series 42 involved in filipodium. Filipodium is a finger, finger structure of the cell. Okay? And then membrane and protrusion, they are in charge of. And rock. Rock is making lamellopodium. Lamellopodia is this structure. This structure is lamellopodia, and this, as a finger, is filipodia. Finger, filipodia, lamellopodia, not finger. And low is stress fiber. Why stress fiber? This is stress fiber. Okay. And then somehow this CD42 can activate rock. A rock sometimes activate low, sometimes they de de deactivate low. How they happen? So when the lamellopodia and filipodia are making, cell want to migrate. When cell want to migrate, they have to remodel the affecting, right? And then after remove this affectin, they have to go front or go back. Because of that, sometimes rock can inhibit row to depolymerize the fiber and then go migration. But sometimes they feel like, oh, they want to, they do not want to migrate. They want to attach and stay there. And then at that time, rock also can activate the row to make the stress fiber. So this very dynamic uh, interaction between rock and row. But uh, so based on this context, you try to understand the other feature. So this is the important for us low GT page, low GT page family, low GT page. Low GT page is three, low, rock, series 42. And then they can be activated by low GFF, ex exchange factor. What exchange? From GDP to GDP, to turning on, to turn on, right? Now how they turn on? Through this integrin and receptor tyrosine kinase and GPCR, G protein couple receptor. So GPCR is majorly detect the nutrient like peptide, glucose, lipid, this kind of thing. This is the trace kinase, most of the growth factor, VGF, FGF, EGFR, something like that, and hormone. 
estrogen, testrogen, something like that. And then integrin, they sense the ECM component, right? And then when they sense ECM component, when ECM change, ECM is stretch or they contract, because of integrin physical binding, they somehow can activate low GAF, GFS. And then when they in, in, in activate exchange factor, GTP to change to GTP, and then when you focus on low, low GTP, they activate rock and then regulation of intermediate filament or ectomyosin contraction. And also sometime MDI is involved. And then stress fiber, focal adhesion, myosin activation, contraction activity stabilization. But in case of rock GTP and then lucidity 42 GTP, they through this wave and WASP, they are making ARP23. This is another actin polymerization, but in different way. This ALP23, they are making branch. Making branch means when you make the, this filipodia and lamellopodia, they have many branch. Branch means not only alignment. This way, this way, this way, this way, right? They, are, they have to make many branch. When they make the many branch, they activate this and making this ALP23. This is some branching site. And then from this branching, they are making the another effectin. So through this effectin, rock is making lamellopodium formation and membrane ruffling. Ruffling means when the cell uptakes some nanoparticle or other molecule from the outside. And then this CDC42 in charge of filipodia formation, endosome internalization, and cortical actin stabilization. Okay, and then let's see another yeah, figure. This is all how we call it low GT page. Low GT page. And then this low way. Low way is yeah, they activate rock. Low way, it's a low way is low, same thing. So low way GTP, low GTP is the same thing. So low rock and MDR and LIMK. Coflin deactivate and actin. So this coflin is in charge of actin depolymerization. So because of this LIMK kinase, this coflin is deactivated, so they can make more effectin. And from the MDR, actin depolymerization and macrotuber stabilization. In case of CDC42 and RAG1, sometimes CDC42 deactivate low A and RAG1 deactivate low way, low way deactivate rock one, okay? And then when they activate it through this wasp and wave, ALP23, ALP23, filipodia formation, laminophoria formation, sometime from the PAK, limb K, and then they, sometime because of rock one, they also making effectin by inhibition of coflin. So, so maybe this is already I mentioned to you, so you you get you guys can understand a little bit about this low GT page. So the class of low GT page, as I told you, three: low, rock, series forty two. Okay, why they why we call it low GT page? Because this low GEF they making the GTP to low rock series forty two. So because of this low, they came and then when they are this low, G, F, E, F, make the other three component as a GT pages. This is called GTP. So in case of coflin, you know, for your understanding, coflin is like that. When they are activated, coflin, without postpolation, they are making depolymerization of affecting. But because of limb K, when the coflin is postpolated, the coflin cannot bind to affecting, so they can maintain the affecting. And then, this is actin polymerization continuously, but when coflin is losing postpolation, they activate and they can bind to affecting, and they are ready for cut the affecting. Okay. And then, in case of um, Non-muscle coflin is coflin one. 
So if we want to look at some carefully mediated some mechanism, you have to look at the coupling one, not coupling two. Coupling two is found in muscle. So just for your reference, GPCR receptor and another receptor, kinase receptor. GPCR is like rhodopsin, secretion, metabolic glutamate, fungal mating, cyclic AMP. So some biomolecular involved. Like energy, peptide, lipid, sugar, protein, they are attached to the, this receptor and then go to signal. But in case of RTK, EGF, PDGF, FGF, FGF, VGF, NGF, HGF, all are related to the growth factor. Okay. So when you think about the growth factor related something, most of them are RTK. And then, not growth factor, some metabolite, GPCR. And then, some component or chemical change, integrin. So those are three major receptor which cell have it. Integrin receptor, RTK receptor, GPCR receptor. Okay. And then why is the down signaling of the low GT page? So here, very complicated, but when you look at this left side, okay, as I told you, low way, they are attached to cell membrane. And then from the exchange vector, they are, they are GDP to change the GDP, right? And then they low way, they activate low kinase, rock, right? Low kinase, rock, activate. And then because it's rock, rock kind substrate, and then this cell formation, contraction, focal data migration, and enhanced. But this Rock kinase also, they, this uh, myosin light chain, myosin light chain, they activate it. Okay? And then, ah, okay. This, so, rock kinase through this MITP1, MLC phosphatide inactive. inactive which is phosphorylation form. But when they remove phosphorylation form, they are activate. When they activate it, they remove this MLC phosphorylation and make them deactive. Here, MLC kinase inactive form and make them activate by calcium help. So they are making MLC is more MLC phosphorylation and then MLC phosphorylation can make this stress fiber formation. Actually, this arrow, not here, they should go here. Low kinase, they directly activate this yeah, MLC phosphorylation. And here, so why is the, why is the important, the calcium in this uh, mechanical transduction? Because calcium, because of car modeling, MLC can make activated. So when you don't have the calcium in interstellar level, MLCK cannot activate it. So here, they, this is some um, smooth muscle, vascular. So calcium can be uh, released from sort of calcium channel or some psychoplasmic reticulum or ER, they are released calcium. And other receptor also, they are making more calcium. And then make the muscle cell, smooth muscle cell can contract. Here, yeah, very similar. So row A GTP active form binding to cell membrane. And then when when they are deactivated, GAP, activate phosphatase, remove the phosphorylation, inactive. When they make the activate, GF, because of row A, rock kinase inhibited. Uh, rock kinase is activation, but this Y27, they are deactivated rock, and C3. They this bot Botox to for beauty of your facial muscle. This is inhibit this row wave, very high signal, high upstream level. Okay, and then because of that, rock kinase they all postulated, and then this postulation here they mention about the cell death, neutral retraction, or neuropathic pain, or functional defect. But in our mechanical induction, they are involved in. Uh, actin 
polymerization or cell spreading or cell contraction or inflammation, anything you are involved in. So this rock kinase is very fundamental mechanism to regulate the cell pH. So this below one, the action of the cell is depending on your study. This can be some inflammation, cell survivor, cell die, or some exosome secretion, other things, all, all kinds of things can be done, can be an example. So here, yeah, low, because of low, low A, they are activated rock. Why? They inactivate. And somehow, in the context of apoptosis, when the Y is treated, inhibit rock, so apoptosis is inhibited. Rock 1, in another pathway, okay? Rock 1 inhibit rock, rock also inhibit rock 1. But sometimes also rock 1 can activate the rock. So in the context, NSC inhibitor, they are working here, rock 1. So yeah, today we are up to this. We can try to understand, and then next week we will make it further. So when you look at the ectomyosin contraction, so this is called non-muscle myosin 2. So this is some myosin. Myosin is this is some heavy chain, okay? Myosin heavy chain (MHC), and then this tail, and then this is myosin motor. Motor means they can bind to affect him. And then this neck, neck is light chain, thin, then heavy chain, okay? So heavy chain, light chain, and motor side. When you look at the, this head, motor domain, so this heavy chain, okay? And then somehow they are light chain here, and then this is some head. Head, when you see, actin binding cleft, ATP binding pocket, because when the myosin struck, they need ATP. So they have ATP binding pocket. And then essential light chain here, somehow light chain here, and the regulator of light chain site. Okay. So in head, actin binding site, ATP binding site, and then also light chain here, light chain regulate here. So, yeah, it's another graph. This is a heavy chain, light chain, and head. So, they are depicted like that. So, how they move? Heavy chain and this head, head low is directly attaching to the affecting. This heavy chain, they are consists of the frame. When they need power, they only use light chain. Because light chain have very thin, so, the, the old power of cell is from the, this light chain, myosin light chain. Okay? So the people typically like that. Heavy chain, domain, and myosin light chain here. So myosin light chain, postpartage, they remove, uh, they remove postpolation. So when the myosin light chain, they are they were, and when they are activated, they need postpolation, right? So when the light chain is postpolated, they induce power. They make the stroke up, force and back, force and back. But because this MHCP, MHC postpartage, they remove postpolation, so they are losing their power. But low kinase, they inhibit this MHC postpartage, and then they activate MHC kinase. And then this MHC kinase here, they also need calcium and carmodulin binding site. So when this MHC kinase, when they're activated, they need calcium and carmodulin. Okay, so up to here. So again, so low, 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 and low A, they are active form, maybe GTP. And low GTP, they activate low kinase, and then MHC kinase 
activated because of kination, MHC can get phosphorylate and then actin rearrangement. But this why they inhibit this MHC this this pathway, this pathway as well, ML7, they inhibit this kinase 2 phosphorylation. Okay. In the low kinase, somehow inhibit MLC phosphatase and then inhibition of inhibition, so activate the MLC. Like that. So in another picture, continuously, myosin 2 below is on phosphorylation, upper is off. When they're on, what they need? MLC kinase, calcium carmodulin. Kinase means at phosphorylation and then because myosin 2 actin, they are binding together in the contraction. But here, MHC phosphatase removed the phosphorylation over here. They are losing phosphorylation and then relax. And then when they ectomyosin the contraction occur, they need ATP. As a consumer of ATP, they make the contraction worse. Here, low low A. Rock kinase, uh, low kinase, and then MHC phosphatase, uh, MHC phosphorylation, an uh, active form of MHC, they are in inactive by MHC phosphatase interaction. In another way, LIMK activation, coflin actin depolymerization inhibit, and the stress fiber also enhanced. MDR is another way, actin polymerization, like that. Here, yeah, same manner. This my this myosin light chain postpolation on off on is through by on is through by this MLC kinase. So from calcium cytoplasm in enhanced through this calcium binding when they are calcium carbonyl binding together as a consumer of GTP. This one postpolate group can combine to myosin and then activate it. And then also the ectomyosin is phosphatase. And then as a consumer of ATP, they are making contraction force. It's like that. This is heavy chain, domain, and light chain. When they're phosphorylated, they need some contraction. And then anyhow, but this MHC phosphatase remove the phosphorylation, how they do? When they calcium a lot, calcium a lot, because of the low way, rock, inhibit MHC pole, support ties. So calcium also enhance this MHK as well as inhibit the MHP to making more myosin light chain phosphorylation for making more contraction. So this is previously I show you, right? MHC phosphorylation. <coughs> MHK phosphorylate make stroke, but phosphatase remove phosphorylation, they are gone, regulated by rock kinase. So up to here, any question? Perfect. Okay, so you guys try to understand this pathway during the one week. And then next week, when we start the uh, class, you can ask me certain question. Based on that, after resolving the question, we can go further. And the further means how the actin contraction is really occurred with the, with the help of the ATP, and then calcium, how they are involved, and then the role of the integrin, and EDTA, and then summary of the, this pathway, and then application. How you are using this inhibitor study? So many, I show you many examples how they show them. So anyhow, for making this kind of schematic images, you have to do inhibitor study. This this, this inhibitor is working or not working? So this one, I suggest like that. And then, and then I show you for understanding mechanical biology how you are doing your experiment efficiently. Yeah, first, some actin dapi staining, and QPCR, Western cell behavior, sequencing mechanism inhibitor, in vivo, 
So what is the best way to save your time for understanding the mechanical transaction? Thank you.